Okay, Shalom. I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay, respect and charity to all you brothers out there pushing this word with sincerity and truth and put laying your life down. Okay, for this truth. This is another episode of Performing Arts, and this is Brother Prince Shemad Basar. And what we're going to get into is um, Colossians. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let me just give you a little opening in Colossians. Um, Tahar did a little, um, a little a breakdown on some of this about what was going on in Colossians. So I'm going to add on. Okay, so in Colossians, um, if Ephesians can be labeled the epistle portraying the church of Yahweh, the Colossians must surely be the church. The, the um, they say Christ here, but the um, Yahweh of the church. Ephesians focuses on the body. Okay, Colossians focuses on the head. Okay, so that's why it says that um, the that Yahweh of the church, and it says like Ephesians, the little. Book of Colossians divides neatly in half with the first portion doctrinal and the second practical. And poor purposes to show that Yahweh Shah is permanent first and foremost in everything, which is true. Okay? Now, to add on to that, I want to give you a little history of Colossians. Okay? And let's let's go on with that. Um Colossians. Colossians. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, where was it at? I had it earlier. Okay, so it says, um, we know that it's a letter written from Paul to the Christians of Colossae, including as a book and a New Testament. And what is the main message? The main theme of Colossians to provide the early Christians with substantial evidence of Yahweh is the head. Okay. So that's that. Okay, but let's let's just get this. Now we're gonna have. I'm gonna read to you. Colossae was an ancient city of Periga in the Roman province of Asia. At one time of great importance, but dwelling, dwindling later as its neighbor, Laodicea, prospered. Exphenia, X-E-N-O-P-H-O-N-S, -X -E 10,000 had stopped here on their way to Babylon. In the days of, of its prosperity, it shared in the wool industry. So that's what they was doing in that time. Strabo mentions the fine black wool of his sheep. It was situated in the upper part of the valley of Lys Lyxus, L Y C L C U S, a tributary of the Miranda, about 10 miles of Ladosia, and 13 southeast of Heropolis. The three cities naturally form a sphere of missionary labor for Apparis. Okay, or Apparatus, who lived at Colossae, which is Colossians 4 and 12. Okay, and let's let's back that up with some scriptures real quick. Colossians 4 and 12. So let's go to Colossians 4 and 12, and it says, Epirus, who is one of you, a servant of your house, I salute you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete, and all the will of God. And then it says, For I bear him record that he have a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Heropolis. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that backs this up where I get the information from. And then that's, um, now let's go to Colossians 1 and 1. Colossians 1 and 1, Paul, an apostle of Yahweh, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Yahweh of Christ, are at Colossae. Grace be unto you in peace from, from the Most High, our Father, and the Lord, Yahweh, Mashiach. 
okay so that was that and I was talking about Timothy all right so those are just certain things that I wanted to bring out and um now the main points that I wanted to bring out and this is Okay, the main point that I want to give out, bear with me one second, is Colossians 2. Okay, Colossians 2, and we're going to go from, we're going to break this down. And it's going to be on um, the five errors that endangers the church. Okay, and we can use that today. The same thing happened then, it's happening now. Okay, so let's now the from let's break this down. So we're gonna start with the first error was enticing words. Okay. And it says, um, let's go to Second Colossians, because we're doing we're gonna break down chapter two. Second Colossians, Colossians two, verse four. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Okay? For through for though I be absent in flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order, and in the steadfastness of your faith in Yahweh. As you have therefore received Yahweh, they say Christ, the Lord, so walk you in him. Okay, let's get a precept with that. First Thessalonians 4 and 1. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1. Okay. First Thessalonians. Four and one. And it says, furthermore, then we be beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord, Yahweh, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please the Most High, so you would abound more and more. For we, know, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord, Yahweh. So once again, a lot of these things that we're serving, with that we're doing. Okay, that we're doing our own thing, which is tradition of men, according to Colossians chapter four through seven. Okay, we're being enticed by man's word, and not by um, Yahweh's word or His commandments. Okay, by who you exactly call Jesus Christ. We're being enticed. So those are one of the endangerments, endangerments, endangerment that the um, the children of Yahshua Allah is, is is facing. Okay, it's enticing words because a lot of us go by things that sounds good, but it ain't good. Just like a woman, you know, a lot of women go by things that sounds good, but they don't go by action. Remember, we always go by obedience is better than sacrifice. So it's not about what person says. It's about what person, what a person does. Okay. And this is what the church was going off at. And this is what was Paul was telling them. Okay. The five errors. So one of the errors was enticing words. Let's finish the verse seven. Rooted and built up in him and established in faith, as you have been taught, and bounded therein with thanksgiving. Okay? So, four through seven is an enticing word. Being gained. Okay? You're going by what, what, what the church say, what the people say, but you're not going by what the commandments told you, which, which came from Yahweh. Okay? And it says... Um, Let's go back to four, verse four. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Now let's get into that a little bit more, enticing words. Okay? Actually, let's look up that. Even though I know we we already know what that is. Shalom, I'm gonna start. 
But let's go into enticing words. Enticing words. Okay. Enticing. Attractive or tempting, alluring. And what does that make you think of? It makes me think of um, Revelations 3 and 10, the hour and temptation. Okay? That's what enticing is. And that's the same thing that's going to happen in the latter days when this RFIB, RFID chip comes out, when, um, which is out already. But what I mean is you're going to have to choose. You're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Satan. Because that's what that RFID represents. Your, your, um, your allegiance either is to your house or to Satan. Okay? That's what. That's why that our temptation and Jacob's trouble and our RFID chip technology at an all-time high, that's what that's talking about. You Who are you going to, at those days, the, the, the is going to stand firm, but the weak is going to be enticed. Okay? Or by attempting. There's going to be intent, tempted. By something and they're gonna break it and they're gonna fall into it okay and in order to stand firm and to, and to not to be enticed you have to stay firm into what your howish words he's the head okay so it says attractive or tempting alluring an enticed prospect it says um, arousing a strong attraction or interest alluring how to use enticing in a sentence. We don't need to worry about that. But you get it. The symptoms is, is for enticing is, um, we don't need that either. But you get the, the gist of it. Enticing. So that's the hour of temptation. You're going to be tried. You're going to be enticed. Okay? So now, let's go to, um, we in verse 4 still. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11.13. Second Corinthians um eleven thirteen. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Woo! Read it again. Let's start at 12. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasions from them which desire occasions, that in their glory they may be found even as we. Then it says, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, Transforming themselves into the apostles of themselves, and to, I'm sorry, and transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see, that's why I said it's the hour of temptation, Revelations three and ten, Jacob's trouble, enticing. Enticing is a big thing, man. Especially, it's enticing to your secret desires of things that you like. Okay, you got to tight for on the lower level. You entice for your favorite piece of candy. If somebody diggle that shit in front of you, you might make you break and do it. No discipline. All right. Now, the second one is philosophy. Woo! The second one is just philosophy. So now, that's going to be eight to thirteen. Let's read that. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men and 
after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh, after Christ. For in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead body. So you trust in the most, you trust in the most high, and then you trust in his son. Okay, because he gave all things to his son, the son for his son to be in charge. So that's why he's the Godhead. Okay, for in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Um, and then it says, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Right, because remember, the circumcision was made cutting through the flesh, but the real circumcision is made in the heart. But do you get both of them if you can? Yes, you do. Okay, because that's still part of the law. Okay, but the real thing we're looking at is the circumcision of the heart. Okay, which ties into what? I say faith. Okay. Because Yahweh Shah is faith. Okay. You haven't seen Yahweh Shah, or who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. So you believe in something that you don't that you have never seen, but you got faith and hope that he doesn't exist, that he does exist to bring you out of this captivity, okay? To bring you up. Because you know that it ain't nothing going on down here. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. <laughs> bills upon bills. And other wicked things in this world. Okay, so let's finish. And it says, um, now, let's jump back up to eight. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Let's look at philosophy. Because that's the second thing. Philosophy. The study of the fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence, especially when considered as an academic discipline, a particular system of philosophy, thought, plural noun, philosophies, okay, the study of theoretical basis of particular branch of knowledge and experience, the philosophy of science, and science means truth, thinking, reasoning, thought, okay, now when you do research, and you, you'll know that there's many philosophers today, and there's many Epicureans. When you look up Epicureans, you look it up, and Stoics. The Epicurean Stoics in ancient time, okay, which that's not the name for them today, but they are still Epicureans and Stoics. They were philosophers. So when you have guys that come out like, um, that come out with um, Egyptology, um, the black woman is God, um, and, and um, and, and, you know, all these different other philosophies, okay, that's not contrary to the facts. Because remember, science is truth, and this is the truth, okay? And we back it up with everything through filtering it through the Bible, okay? And this goes all the way back to um, um, history, okay? It goes back to history. It goes back to dates and facts, okay? So this is not something that we are making up as we go on. Okay, we bring you the history, the facts. Remember, science is truth, and this word is truth. Okay, that's all that means. Okay, so that's philosophy. So a lot of guys come out today just to to, to um says this is a white man's book. Okay, so be it. This day and time, you don't go about arguing with a with a with, with, with an individual if they don't believe, they don't believe. Okay, you let them do what they do. You do what you do. Okay, because at the end of the day, you're gonna live your life. You know, and you're going to be saved because that's the hope that you're waiting on. And those that don't believe, they're going to die in their, in, their, in their thing. Okay? And some say, ah, man, this has been going on for so long. The earth is going to be destroyed. They have no faith. They don't believe in your house, So that's why they don't believe. Okay? So that's that. Okay? So now, it says... Um, philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition and after the tradition of the rudiments of the world okay now let's go you know what we could skip this and we can go uh, 
right into this. Okay, so let's go to two, to verse seven. It says, um, "Okay, beware." Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world. Let's look at rudiments. Rudiments. Strong's G 4747. Stoichia. Stoichia. Okay. Any first thing from which the others belonging to some series or composite whole taking their rise and element first principle. A letters of alphabet as the elements of speech, not however the written characters, but the spoken sound. The elements from which all things have come, the material causes of the universe. The elements, the rudiments, primary and fundamental principle of art, science, and discipline. Mathematics, exclude geometry, things of the world. Okay, let's go to that. Okay, so. Okay. <clears throat> so it says rudiments. No, it says rudiments. I went over that before rudiments. Um. Rudiments. Okay, well, you can look that up more of yourself. And then it says, um, the rudiments of the world, the things of the world, and not of after Yahweh. So, rudiments of the world, the things that's concerning the things of the world, but not of the Mashiach Yahweh. So, let's go to Galatians 4 and 3. And it says, even so, we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Okay. But when the fullness of the time was come, the most high sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, the most high has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Now, when you look at that, remember we first read that, um, I, we first read about the circumcision and then I said it's the circumcision of the heart, okay? So this goes into the law, but this also tells you that we, we are under the law, but we know that we're going to break the law. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to be able to keep all the law. You're not going to break the laws intentionally, okay? Because then you break, you're still sinning. But some things we do unaware that we're breaking of the law and the Lord knows that in bondage that you're not there's no way that you could actually keep all those laws 100% completely no way so now he made a better covenant with us through what the covenant of Yahweh which is under the law but still is under the which is most which is faith supersedes the law but you still have to keep the law if that makes sense because the reason why that goes hand in hand, because some niggas would like to say, well, under the new law, we don't have to, under the new covenant, faith, okay, through faith, we don't have to do the old things. All we got to do is do something, and all we got to do is say, Heavenly Father, thank you, and continue on doing it. That's the easy way out. No, you still have to keep those laws, 
to the best of your ability, okay? But through faith is the most important thing. Believing in Yahweh Shah that he is, okay, the Savior, which is the Most High Son, okay? And all things was given to him from his Father, okay? And he died for us. He was a, um, the mediator for us. And he wiped out all our sins for his blood sacrifice for him being um, dying for us. Okay, but that's that. Okay, now let's go back to um, Colossus 2. Okay, so now we had um, ten. Okay, so we read eight. For in him dwell all the fullness of God head body, and you are complete in him, which is the head of the principality and power. In him also you are circumcised. That's the part I was telling you about. You are circumcised and without hand and putting off the body and the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. But that's not where we was at. We was at, um, I guess we were, 12, excuse me. Buried with him in baptism, where also you are rising with him through the faith of the operation of the Most High, who have raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh have he quickened together with him, having given you all trespasses. Okay, so that's that was the second one, philosophy. The third one is um, legality. Okay, the third one is dealing with legality. Legality. Then let's take a look at what is legality. can get understanding of that. Legality. The quality of state of being in accordance with the law. Documentation testifying to the legality of the armed cell. Synonyms. Synony synonyms. Lawfulness. Okay. Let's look at this word, the same thing. Conformity to the law or to rules. Refusal to recognize the, le the, the legitimacy of both governments. That's the one. So that's legality. And, that, and would you would say that that's happening right now? Niggas don't listen to the, even the government law, which the Most High put that in place. So when you say fuck the police, you're breaking the Most High's laws. But we didn't know that. Okay, even though we know that they are oppressor and they do us wrong, we still have to stay in... In, in, in a sense of their rules because they were put here for a reason now the only time you could go against those rules is they make you go against the heavenly father rules okay it says conformly to the law or rules refusing to recognize the legitimacy of both government with reference to a child the quality of being legitimate okay Okay, that's it. You got the, the, we got it. Now, let's go back to that. Now, that's from 14 to 17. Okay, legality. So, I gave you enticing words, philosophy. Now, this is legality. And this is going to be from 14 to 17. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way and nailed it to his cross. Okay, so the Lord, to the, 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 the Lord Yahweh Shah, took this as we just said, and he died on the on the cross to bear our burdens and take away our sins to bring us back into the fold of the heaven to the heavenly Father, because the heavenly Father turned his back on us at one time, like because you, you niggas is being um stiff necked, hard headed. Okay, that's why slavery took um, took took place. That's why niggas getting shot down in the cops for today. Okay, and that's why our, our people's in a low state of condition. Okay, and I can name many more. Okay, and it says which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to a cross. Right? How did he do that? By sacrificing himself for us. Okay, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Triumph, 
triumph, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in or respect of, ho of any ho holiday or of the new moon or on the Sabbath, which is a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Yahweh. Let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary, um, voluntary hum humility and worshiping of angels. Introduce it into those things which have not seen vainly. Um, that was. I'm sorry. Stop at 17, which is a shadow of things to come. But the body of Christ. Now you gotta remember too. You got to see that the nations look at us and say, "Why did you do that like this?" Okay, and we have different. And then, um, let me say, I give a bad example. You even have uh, uh, you even have um, Israelites of the circumcision that's learned. They don't all um, do they ha they pass over on the same day. Some of them don't come up on the same day. But you can't judge them on that. You know what I'm saying? But they're, you know, as long as they're keeping the commandments to the best of their ability. And actually, none of us is keeping all those high holy days to the to the T. None of us can. How can you when you being oppressed? Now you do it. That's why we rehearse the righteous acts. That's why we rehearse the righteous acts. It says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or respect of, or, or, of any holy day or the new moon or on the Sabbath days, which is the shadow of things to come, but the body of, is of your house shot. Yeah. Now, the next one is, um, we got 18 to 19. And that's mysticism. Mysticism. Okay, let's see what mysticism is. A belief that union with absorption into the deity or the absolute of the spiritual apprehension of knowledge inaccessible to the to the intellect may be attained through contemplation and self-surrender. Two, belief characterized by self-delusion of dreamy confusion of thought, especially when based on the assumption of an occult qualities of mysterious agencies. All right, so that's mysticism. And that's going to be from 18 to 19. And it says, Let no man beguile you of your reward and a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. We are not supposed to worship angels. Okay? And it's, it, it, I think it's an account. It is an account, I don't think. I don't know where it's at. But it is an account. You look it up yourself. Is it an account to prove if I'm wrong that um, angels that came down to earth and men bowed down to them as to give them ob um, to reverence them? To, and then the angels say, no, they just they don't reverence them. Reverence the most high. Okay. They said, don't worship them. Okay. So you look that up. So angels telling you that. And then it says, so let's read it again at verse 18. Let no man beguile you of the reward and voluntary humanity and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which have not, be, not seen. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Yeah, and a lot of niggas is puffed up. They're doing things that they don't even realize they're doing. Okay, they're making up doctrines as they go. Okay, um, they're just trying to make this thing a fab. It's a cool thing. You know what I'm saying? Prophesying with baseball caps on and hats on for their head. Come on, man. Disrespecting the, the, the most high. And if something as little as that, you have to look at a man like Yo, something ain't right with him. Okay? You know, when they come in with a new doctrine, cover their head, 
you know, or, 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 or that's not what Paul was talking about, whatever like that. And it says the woman should cover her head, but not a man. Okay. Now there was occasion that men did do that. Okay, but that was a sign of um um, that was one that was a sign of um. Cabal, shame. Okay, and and, and what's the other one? Um, I'm saying that wrong. Not cabal, shame. Um, when they were mourning. Okay, putting their ashes over their head, they were mourning. Okay, and stuff like that. Um, there's certain instances of that. And then it says, um, where it says 19. That's it. So that's mysticism. The last one is asceticism. So let's go on to that. Asceticism. Severe self-discipline and avoidance of all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reasons. Now, that right there, you got like you got, for example, you got the Catholic Church on the left doing on the left hand side, saying they not, they're not going to never deal with a man, um, deal with a woman, and they're going to just serve the Most High, right? But yet, it's still they breaking their rules because they fire. They got a fire inside of them, and 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 that fire is going to make them break. That's why Paul says, if you got a, if you got a desire, get married. You know what I'm saying? And some of them have a desire that, even though that whole shit is wrong that they into, everything about that is wrong. But that whole desire that they have is that they say, oh, we're going to serve the, their God, which is you know Satan, okay? And they're going to be like, oh, um. I'm not gonna deal with no woman, but yet still you have a lust for little kids, and you know the Catholic Church is built on that. Years and years of history of the, the and, you know, of, of that priest or that so-called priest touching little kids, but yet still he said he won't marry a woman. Okay, so you know all for the of the church, even though that's on the left hand side, because you have some guys that might feel like they can do that, like Paul did that. He never had no woman. But he said that was him. That's what he could do. But that don't mean you niggas could do that. And if you have a burning desire, you start feeling you have that burning desire, you should get a woman. Okay, so let's go to 2023. It says, therefore, if 20 to 23. Assertitism. I'm saying it wrong, but it said, um, Wherefore, if you be dead with Yahweh from the rudiments of the world, why, as thou living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. You notice that word, which are which all are to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will, worship and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying, satisfying of the flesh. So those are the five endangers that was going on in poor days, but it's going on in our days. Shalom.